so welcome back. Before we end our tour of the basic physics that we're going to use to go on and analyze musical instruments and sound and all sorts of things related to music, we're going to talk about one more basic piece of physics. It's the third of Newton's famous three laws. And it's something that we've basically already seen without really specifying it. It's to do with the conservation of momentum again. And so just to set it up, I wanna show you again this simulation of this character Vlox who's out in outer space and who spits a ball out of its, out of its nose mouth thing. So here we go. Okay, so you see that as Vlox spit the ball out, then Vlox ended up moving backwards. We'll see it one more time. So we understood this as momentum is conserved, momentum is zero, and when the ball is spit out, then the ball has some momentum going to the left, and so in order for the total momentum to continue to be zero, then Vlox needs to have momentum going to the right. So what we want to do is just understand what that implies about forces. We previously discussed this example before we really introduced the concept of forces, but what now we know that the ball is moving to the left because it had forces acting on it, <clears throat> excuse me, and these forces caused the momentum of the ball to change. In particular, the force on the ball at any time is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the ball. That's Newton's second law. Okay, so in terms of momentum conservation, we can say that as Vlox is spitting out the ball, the rate of change of the momentum of the ball must be opposite to the rate of change of the momentum of Vlox because momentum needs to stay the same, needs to stay zero at all times. Because these rates of change of momentum are exactly the forces, we can then immediately say that during this spitting process, the force on the ball from Vlox is equal and opposite the force on Vlox from the ball. Okay, so that's why we can see that Vlox is going off in the other direction because there's not just a force on the ball, there must also be a force on Vlox. And this is a very general result. So if I were in outer space pushing on a ball, the ball would go one way, I would go the other way. What we've learned with this argument is that whenever you have two objects and we think about the force from object A on object B, that's then always going to be the negative of the force on object B from object A. And we can see it most easily if we imagine that we're in outer space and there aren't any other forces, then this thing is just absolutely required in order for momentum to be conserved. But it's a rule that applies everywhere, even on Earth. If I push on a ball in space, it's really just the same as pushing on the ball in Earth. I still feel the force backward. So even here on Earth, when there's lots of forces and it's complicated, I push on the wall, the wall is going to be exerting a force backward on me. So you've probably heard of this before. It's often summarized by the kind of poetic sentence, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. But what it really means is this simple statement about forces. The force on B from A is negative of the force on A from B. And so we'll be seeing this and applying it in various situations coming up.